Hello and welcome to another episode of Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today we're going to be chatting about can you eat chocolates on a keto diet? Who doesn't love chocolate, right? Well, today we're going to find out everything that we need to know about chocolate on a keto diet. We also have a bonus for you and it's Dr. Westman's brand new quiz, uh, finding out exactly what your own personal carb threshold is. We will uh, put a link for you guys in the description. So let's get started. How are you doing, Eric? Doing great. How are you, Glenn? Very, very good. Thank you. So Eric, um, most people think that if you're on a keto diet, um, you've got to deprive yourself. You, there's very little that you can have. Uh, one of the things that people obviously miss and love or think that they have to miss um, is chocolate on a keto diet. So um, can you just help us understand the do's and don'ts and what the rundown or the lowdown is on chocolate on a keto diet? Yeah. And of course you can have chocolate on a keto diet. Uh, that was something I learned very quickly years ago when I was helping people learn how to do a low carb keto diet. If you didn't allow people to have chocolate, that would be a deal breaker for a lot of people. So you can have chocolate and to me, it uh, boils down to the simple system of how many grams of carbohydrate there is in the chocolate, wh whatever you're, you're having, you're consuming. Um, so yeah, you can have chocolate. Now, if, um, if, if you're gonna be having a chocolate that is sweetened obviously with sugar, then obviously you're gonna have to have a lot less of that chocolate. Because obviously if, you're, if your daily allowance is 20 grams of total carbs per day, and you're eating a piece of chocolate that's got 10 grams, you don't want to do that because that's half your daily allowance right there in that piece of chocolate. So um, perhaps you want to be smart about the chocolates. And, um, you know, there's, there's lots of chocolates that are sweetened with, uh, with alternatives that um, do not contain carbs. Yes, well, but if you want to do the prescription strength keto, which is what we recommend using total carbs and not net, you're still going to be aware of and counting those sugar alcohols and, and additives to the ch chocolate. So yes, it's best to, well, choose a chocolate you like. I, I've had people come to me, you know, kind of proud that they are using the internet keto version of, you know, that says you need, you know, dark chocolate. And, and I would ask, well, do you like it? And they say, no, it's kind of bitter. I said, well, then don't have that. So you don't have to be limited to a certain type of chocolate, it's all a matter of the number of grams of carbohydrates. So practically speaking, in my area, I am able to uh, tell people about protein shakes that have a blend of chocolate with, with a, a, you know, milk or cream, and these higher protein, low carb shakes. Uh, now you wanna be careful of the, you know, new, great for keto diet ones that add in a whole bunch of oils and, and uh, things, but you wanna keep the carbs low. In fact, um, one of these shakes, I mean, you look at the carbs in the little box, a chocolate shake has about seven carbs per shake. That's total, not net. Always look at the total if you wanna do prescription strength level of keto. And, but if you don't drink the whole shake, you have half the shake. That's seven divided by two is 3.5 grams. Or, or if you just take a swig, I mean, so it's interesting. People say, oh, and you know, I'm having a protein shake for breakfast. I'm like, well, what do you mean? I mean, are you hungry? No, but I feel like I have to have something. And, and so they're drinking the whole shake thinking that they're actually getting a meal. And so for me, I don't think of it that way at all. I use and recommend people use the chocolate shakes or vanilla or strawberry, whatever you like, to just get a taste of the chocolate. And, and then, so if you have one little swig and put it back in the refrigerator, I calculated once that's, that's about half a gram of carbohydrates. Uh, so if you think of it this way, the choose something you like. I, I don't like dark chocolate, you know, I, I personally. So uh, choose chocolate, chocolate that you like and watch the total grams. But then you have to be careful at first when you're just getting started, if you can't stop to just one or two squares for the day of the chocolate and you eat the whole bar, then you go way over your limit. And that's why a lot of people will, will uh, choose not to have it at first or, or to get the, the little bit bitter chocolate because you don't feel compelled 
to have the whole bar every day. So, I mean, that's the balance of using a program that really works. You have to be careful of trigger foods, foods that you can't control. And chocolate is one of them for a lot of people. But um, so I prefer, you know, I've been doing this 20 years now, I get these little individually wrapped mints that are chocolate mints and, and uh, you know, have just one or two. And a lot of people can do that and they have chocolate every day and they have no feeling of deprivation on a keto diet. Other people have to be very careful about that chocolate because you, you may just eat the whole, the whole bar or the whole box of, of them. So, you know, that's the, where that one size fits all doesn't really apply as to how people can do this. Some can control the chocolate on their own, others can't. But definitely, I mean, for any program that's gonna be sustainable and, and attractive, you need to get a way, you need to have a way to get chocolate. Now, earlier on you mentioned um, that when you're using the total carb method, you can't include polyols. I understand that, of course, because you're using the total carb method, but there are lots of chocolate out there on the market. I mean, I, as an example, our Adapt Keto Bar Minis, the chocolate bars, we don't use any polyols in there. We only use stevia. So in cases like that, um, where there is no polyols, um, as an example, the Keto, the Adapt Keto um, uh, chocolate mini bars, there's only two grams of total carbs in a whole 20 gram you know, bar. Um, so that's almost absolutely nothing. So what is your take on, on that then? Right. Well, the total carbs is what you want to follow. And as you and I know, these mini bars have been tested in many, many people, including people who have type 1 diabetes. And uh, that, that means we can see the effect on the blood sugar and, and um, there really is no effect on raising the blood sugar, which is what you want. Um, yeah, so the, the counting total carbs will, again, simplify things because there are some polyols and sugar alcohols that aren't quite as sweet. So you have a lot of grams of those. And then the newer ones like erythritol are, are stronger. So there's, you need less of it. I, I think they're even going to be stronger sugar alcohols. So you get the sweetness with fewer carbs and, and yeah, yeah, you can follow all of the, the names and all this, and people will say, this is best, this is best, oh, allulose and all that. Just look at the total carbs as the simplifying rule. And you don't have to worry about all of the changing brands and all of that. Make sure the total carbs are really low. And the keto mini bars, I mean, we've been fortunate to have groups of people try them and, and check their own blood glucose afterwards. And, and this is one reason why we're so confident that this is a method that works because we have people testing it, you know, over and over. So um, I know that um, we keep on, you know, harping on the fact the total carbs, the total carbs. I want to ask you um, before we leave one more other question, and that is um, there are some chocolates out there that have chemical sweeteners, so it's artificial sweeteners, so to speak. And, you know, you're going to get the group of people that say, uh, you can't have artificial sweeteners. You've got a different take on that. And um, what is your take on artificial sweeteners where there's, where again, the total carb count would be extremely low for those type of chocolates. Uh, not, they're not polyols. Um, it's just uh, um, artificial sweeteners. Yeah, so there's a, a food quality element that's now into the keto world, keto-verse, if you will, where... Um, the food quality is not such a big issue if you're trying to fix obesity, fix diabetes, that sort of thing. You can have artificial sweeteners and still have this program work. But if you're more concerned about food quality, you want to have really clean eating, then you know, I wouldn't have that stuff. And I would go to the, the bars that don't have those artificial sweeteners, but you don't have to have those. So, so I'll have some people come to me and say, well, it's so expensive to buy all this special food and all. And I'm, I'll say, well, you know, use a method that's your financial means within what you can afford. And if you can't afford those higher priced, uh, clean eating sorts of food, high food quality, this still will work for you. So that's the, again, the, the, the balance of, I need a program that works in everyone the first time, every time. And, and then if you wanna do a, a more, uh, 
clean eating version of it, that's fine. Same kind of idea with grass-fed beef and things like that. You don't have to have those things, but if you can afford it and you want to, you know, change the environment, food environment and how food is made, that's a fine thing to do. If I have someone coming to me eating at fast food restaurants and that's it, this will still work because we focus on the total carbs and, and you know, they're having Diet Coke or something at the fast food place, Diet Pepsi. Um, but so this is just, again, the flexibility with which you have when you use a method like this. Wonderful, Eric. Well, thank you so much for your insights today. We really appreciate that. Uh, that's all we have time for today, folks. Uh, before you leave, remember that we have a special bonus for you today, uh, which is an exciting new quiz based on Dr. Westman's new book called End Your Carb Confusion. Um, if you haven't read the book and would like to determine your personal carb threshold, then the quiz is the right thing for you. You'll find a link in the description. Um, if you'd like to learn more about our online courses, um, you can find us at adaptyourlifeacademy.com. Eric, thank you so, so much. And we look forward to catching up with you again next week for another exciting topic. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Glenn. Take care. If you like this video, you're going to love our Adapt Your Life Academy. So click on the link in the description to find out more.